appreciation to all the doctors and all the engineers and all the soon to be and all the will be and um, all the undecided. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Your time will come. Praise God. I want to teach you all that title gratitude and ingratitude. Amen. God said to us at the beginning of the month that this is our month of thanksgiving. And I want to speak about uh, the power of um, things, the power of giving things, the, pro the power of saying thank you. Amen. Amen. The character and the attitude of gratitude. Amen. First place I want to begin from is the book of Luke, the 17th chapter. Luke, the book of Luke, the 17th chapter from the 17th verse. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It's amazing how, as human beings, we never value the things we have many times until we are about to, or as, until we eventually lose it. Amen. Amen. We never value it. Amen. Amen. We never value it. We are many times ungrateful um, about the things which we have until we begin to lose it. Someone um, said to me in my office, one of um, Pastor Gibson's students said, um, was his student, amen. She said, it's unfortunate that everybody is not like Pastor Gibson. She was now saying this at a time when she had met and experienced another agent. That eventually put her in trouble. And at the same time while she's saying that there is somebody somewhere who is having problem with Pastor Gibson. We are many times ungrateful until we test the other side of the waters that was so attractive to us and we find out it is not so attractive after all. We never appreciate people until we begin to lose them. This particular person, I don't know if she ever had time to thank him. I don't know if she ever saw the need to give him a gift one day in all her years. I do not know if she ever thanked him or appreciated him for being an agent. I'm coming. Hmm. There are many reasons people are ungrateful. So today I'm going to pin a couple of them. Because now we are at the end of the year. In particular, we are in a month where God said we should be giving thanks. And he never said we should give thanks to God or him alone. He said it's a month of thanksgiving, of gratitude and of appreciation. If you read the verse carefully that is on the screen, it says, And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Amen. Amen. Tap your neighbor say, were there not uh, many of us that entered into 2019? Say, but where are the others? Amen. Where are the others right now? Amen. Tap your neighbor say, were there not many of us that ended the semester? But where are the others? Amen. Only 
say an attitude of gratitude can take you to your altitude in life. Are you hearing my English? Only an attitude of gratitude can take you to your desired altitude. Amen. Now, it is crucial. Um, this particular uh, Bible verse um, begins to tell us, if you read the um, incidents that took place before this particular statement of Jesus, some people were sick. Amen. Um, people were sick. They were dirty. They were unclean. You know, they had no hope. They were in their country. They were rejected by their country and their universities in their country. They had no chance or thought of ever studying medicine again until somebody brought good news and said, you know, um, there is a place and there is someone I know who can help you. Amen. And so these unclean people, these, um, the Bible called them lepers, these leprous people, these people with issues, uh, God brings them to you as a leader, as a pastor, or as an agent, or whatever way it is. And um, you, 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 you meet with them and you begin to do something, you begin to minister to them. Jesus ministered to them, and Jesus tells them, he said, okay, now I'm done with you. I want you to begin to go, all of you, I want you to go. Um, I want you to go show yourself to the priests. Show yourself to the priests that you are clean. And the Bible says all ten of them, as they begin to go, as they begin to go somewhere from January to February to March to April to May to June, somewhere along the line, they found something that... Changed their life forever. Tell me about something changed my life forever in 2019. And so these very 10, they were 10. There are some of you who it may not have changed your life in 2019, but it changed your life somewhere in the last 10 years, in the last decade, which is ending now. And the Bible says of them, all ten of them, one of them decides, I'm going to go back and I'm going to thank him. One person of ten decides, I'm going to go back and I'm going to thank him. One. One of nine. Everybody had a message. Everybody had problem. Everybody was sad. Everybody was sick. Everybody was confused. Every person didn't have an idea. Every person didn't have sufficient marks to get into the university. Some had been rejected at the embassy a couple of times. They didn't get the visa. Some had house issues. Some had school fees issues. Some called. Amen. Of all of them, he said, one. Some almost lost their life. Some were depressed. Some backslidded. Some made mistakes. Some sinned. He said only one of all of them came to give thanks. <sighs> Hallelujah. Tell me about only one. Say one of ten came to give thanks. I was preaching on um, Wednesday in one of the Ukrainian churches. And as I was preaching and as I was telling this story, as I was preaching from this particular verse, I was talking about the pastor. I was preaching and I could see the pastor wiping tears from his eyes.
Because many times I was telling them, you think that your pastor giving means everything is okay with him. He's there solving problems, but what you don't know is he himself has problems. And I said, sometimes the only thing you have to say to keep him going is thank you. There are pastors committing suicide in countries. There are pastors retiring. There are pastors quitting on ministry. There are pastors misbehaving. I said, all you have to say is thank you. Sometimes, only thank you. And I told him, I said, when I finish preaching at the end of service, all of you, Several of you will come to me after service to tell me thank you. And I just visited you only once. But there is somebody who has been ministering and pastoring you since in this place. You've never given him thank you. You've never met him after service to say thank you for what you did. And I'll give the reasons why people are like that. Hallelujah. Amen. Why is it that nine... Why do 90% of people act like this? Hallelujah. Why is it that 90% of people act like this? All 10 are helped. All 10 are cleansed. All 10 you did good for all. All 10 were giving attention. Everything was nice to all 10. But only one, 10% of all, comes. Verse 18. Verse 18, verse 18. It says, There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. Tell me about strangers. Amen. Amen. Strangers, strangers, strangers. Amen. And as I was preaching, they were laughing. I said, It's amazing how that it is a foreigner. In a Zemiet, in a Straniet. It takes a foreigner, someone who is from outside to appreciate the good that you have with you inside. He says the prophet is not respected but in his own house. Reason number one for ingratitude is familiarity. Familiarity. Hallelujah. Familiarity. Familiarity. I don't know if I'll say familiarity or call it even over familiarity. Saying the same thing. We get too familiar many times. We get too familiar. It's not Pastor Gibson. You've seen him. Amen. You see him every time. Every time. You see him walking up and down around the dinner. With his leg. Amen. Carrying his bag and his office. Amen with him. Hallelujah. Is not Pastor Ima, my classmate? I knew him when he was Ima. Forget his pastor thing. Ima, 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 come here, come here, Ima, behave yourself. It takes a stranger, a foreigner, someone who is not uh, someone who has not visited his house. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. You know, there are people who respect you a whole lot when they think you live in a certain mansion somewhere. They say, it's pastor, pastor, oh, it's pastor, pastor, Ima, ah, okay. And they come and they meet pastor Ima in the hostel. It changes everything. How can pastor be living in a hostel? Amen. <laughs> Does he have me if he's a pastor? He should be living somewhere, some high class area of the society, driving some crazy car somewhere. I was shocked to see him after class trekking up and down the whole place. Walking, you see him in your bus, you are in the bus or in your car, and he's trekking, passing through the bridge. Familiarity. It's worse when you are his neighbor. And you are his blockmate. And of course, you never knew that uh, pastors, when they use the toilet, it smells. You know. You think, I mean, if you use toilet, I mean, there should be power and anointing. <laughs> yeah, sure, because it seems like his own is even more smelling than yours. You've seen him dress, you see he's uh, just in a hostel like that with singlet and one short like that, one yellow short. <laughs> you can't imagine he's the same brother who is on the altar or the pulpit preaching. And as he's preaching, he's giving it to you and you are wondering, ah, is it not this in that I know? It's not the one I was doing wallpaper the other day. <laughs> That's why many men of God always will tell you, look at a lot of women who admire them, a lot of people who say they are so nice and so good and so great and everything, and laugh, because you don't know me. You have an idea of who you think I am. If you really know who I am, you can't live with me in the same house. And that is why when you have a woman or a wife who can live with you in the same house, The man will tell you, you can never be like this woman. Because you think what you see in the pulpit and in the altar is how I am when I'm at home. I say this because sometimes over-familiarity starts from being in a person's house. You know what I said? A prophet is not respected in his own house. There are some of you now. I'm telling you, it is not good for you to visit your pastor. You can't handle it. You're not mature. You're not mature. You can't visit him. You think it's not hospita hospita hospitality. It's just you're not much, just not much. Of. You have things in your mind, in your head, that you are thinking of. Because you will see how it took a foreigner, because these other ones are Jews. They know Jesus. They know Jesus. Is it not Jesus? Is it not just Jesus that we saw growing up here? The carpenters, you know, so. It took a foreigner to come and say thank you. Number two reason for ingratitude is a feeling of entitlement. A lot of people, a lot of us, we reach point in our life where we feel something is our right. We are entitled to this thing. It's my pastor now, so he's supposed to do this. 
He's not supposed to do anything. Am I talking to somebody? He's not supposed to do anything. When you reach a place where you begin to feel entitled, you have missed it. In life, there is no, there is, you, you see, there is no entitlement. You are not entitled to anything. You are not even entitled to oxygen. Am I talking to somebody? So when you get oxygen, you should be able to thank God that this morning I am still alive. It is not your right to be alive. You don't have more right than the person who died last night. You first, first, there is familiarity with getting used to God. You think God should always do things for you. Everything should always be fine. Everything should always be good. You are not entitled to any of those things. There is no place anywhere where I said it must be so. This is why some folks blame God. Come here, don't somebody. When something is not going right, you know, you know, so so why is God not why is God? It's irresponsibility and ingratitude. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me let me elaborate on this story and then you get me. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with this incident. So of the ten, one of them comes back to Jesus. And he comes to Jesus to thank Jesus. You know, to give thanks for the miracle which he had seen because he had been cleansed. The Bible says the other nine, they continued on their way to go and show the priest, to go and see the priest, to go and see the priest, you know, to go and see the priest from Jesus. The priest. The priest is someone who is officially recognized is recognized by the government. Is you know he has an office. Jesus didn't have an office. Jesus didn't have an office. And we like official things. We like it when you know like packaging. When the person has packaged himself, he wears suit and all those things. He looks so nice. You know like he's a priest. He was oh I'm going to his office. And so you ignore the person. The priest couldn't help you. The Jesus who could help you. You don't care about the Jesus. You're going to the priest. I'm not going to know somebody. Reason number three for ingratitude is a wrong sense of spirituality or over spirituality. Why would you experience a miracle and you keep going? You keep going, you keep going, you keep going. Who knows? Maybe on their way they said, you know, like, Oh, I'm healed. Oh, thank you, God. Oh, thank you, God, for doing this thing for me. Oh, oh, hallelujah. Amen. And they continue their journey. But Jesus says, There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this foreigner. It is one thing for you to be giving thanks in your room. For you to get on your knees and be shouting hallelujah the whole year and the whole month and the whole week. And the, the word of God you're receiving is working for you. You know, um, Pastor Gibson helped you and you ended your semester well without problems. And um, some classmate put you through one or two things and you went to the exam and you passed the exam well. You know, the exact thing he thought you, you came out well. Um, you, you, you came out and then you passed it. It is one thing to be saying, thank you, oh, Father, thank you. You come to church and even thank God. And you fast and pray, another thing. It's another thing for you to go to the person through whom God gave you that miracle. Are you listening to my English? Now, Jesus calls the act of going to an individual, the giving of glory to God. Some people think it is spiritual for me just to go to church. You know, you know, somebody blessed you. You don't thank the person. You come to God and you say, oh God, thank you. And God is saying, that's one level. But I did this miracle through a person. Listen to me. Some people like to take everything to spiritual, to the heavens and to the heavens. And you forget that God is doing what he's doing through people. 